We want to think about the motion of an idealized system called a simple harmonic oscillator, which consists of a mass on the end of a spring that provides a harmonic restoring force. X is the displacement of the mass from its equilibrium position of zero, M is the mass of the object, and F is the restoring force, which is proportional to the mass's displacement, but always opposite in direction to the displacement. There's no friction or gravity, and the spring is massless. We set the mass in motion, and then we are going to do the following. We are going to find the displacement of the mass from equilibrium as a function of time. That's called x of t. In addition, we will find velocity as a function of time. We'll use the symbol u of t for velocity. We'll also find the period of motion tau, which is the time it takes for the mass to undergo one complete cycle of motion. We will find the frequency of motion nu as well as the kinetic energy and potential energy as functions of both time and displacement. We are going to do this while relating all of these quantities to properties of the mass and the spring. Finally, we are going to do this using only Newton's laws. Starting with Newton's second law means starting with force equals mass times acceleration. In this relationship, the force is the force acting on the object attached to the spring, the mass is the mass of the object, and the acceleration is the acceleration of the object. This can be written as force equals mass times the second derivative of displacement with respect to time because acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to time. The x here is position of the object, which is also its displacement from equilibrium because we have defined the equilibrium position of the object to be x equals zero. The physical origin of the force on the left side of this relationship is the spring, and we know that the force it provides is proportional to the negative of the displacement of the object from its equilibrium position. To make this inequality requires the introduction of a constant. We'll use the symbol k for the constant and call it the force constant or the spring constant. Physically, k is related to the stiffness of the spring. The stiffer the spring, the larger the force constant. More abstractly, k just tells us by how much the restoring force changes as the object displaces from equilibrium. If we take this force and substitute it into Newton's second law, we obtain negative kx equal to mass times the second derivative of displacement with respect to time. Subtracting mass times acceleration from both sides and then multiplying through by negative one gives mass times acceleration plus the force constant times displacement equal to zero. This is very definitely a differential equation with the unknown function being the displacement, x, as a function of time. It is second order because the highest derivative taken is the second. It is ordinary because it is a function of just one independent variable, time. It is linear because it involves no powers of derivatives, no products of derivatives, and no products of a derivative in the unknown function, x. It is homogeneous because after taking all the terms involving x and its derivatives to the left, the only thing remaining is zero. Finally, the coefficients in front of the unknown function and its derivatives are constants, not dependent on time. The solution to every second order, ordinary, linear, homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients has the form displacement as a function of time equal to e raised to some constant alpha times time. If we substitute this proposed solution into the differential equation, we obtain mass times the second derivative of e to the alpha t with respect to time plus the force constant times e to the alpha t equal to zero. Taking the second derivative of e to the alpha t with respect to time in the first term gives mass times alpha squared times e to the alpha t with the remainder of the expression unchanged. Dividing both sides by the proposed solution e to the alpha t gives mass times alpha squared plus the force constant equal to zero. Solving for alpha squared, we obtain negative the force constant divided by mass. Taking the square root of both sides to obtain alpha gives plus or minus i, the imaginary number, times the square root of k over m. As a reminder, the square root of negative one is the imaginary number i. At this point, we have solutions for the differential equation. All we have to do is plug this expression for alpha into the proposed solution for displacement, but we'll come back to that in a bit. For right now, notice that the constant alpha, which is part of the solution for displacement as a function of time, is written in terms of the properties of the system, mass of the object on the end of the spring with force constant k. We said we wanted solutions written in terms of the properties of the system, and it appears we have that. Because alpha can be positive or negative, there are two possible solutions that are equally valid. One is displacement equal to e raised to the plus i times the square root of k over m times time. The other is displacement equal to e raised to the minus i times square root of k over m times time. It is important to understand that these are both perfectly valid solutions to the differential equation. To make this easier to write, we define omega to be the square root of k over m. With this, the first solution is now e to the plus i omega t. The other solution is e to the negative i omega t. And that just looks better than having square roots in the exponent. Whenever a linear differential equation has two solutions like this, the most general way to write all possible solutions is as a linear combination. For our system, the most general expression for displacement as a function of time is some constant a times e to the positive i omega t plus a different constant b times e to the minus i omega t. 
With this expression, it is possible to pick either solution by adjusting the constants a and b. If you want to pick e to the positive i omega t as the solution, set b equal to zero. If you want to pick e to the minus i omega t as the solution, set a equal to zero. Or you can pick a solution that is a combination of both. This is the most general way to write a solution to the differential equation for this system because it allows you to pick either solution or anything in between. The problem is that the expression for displacement contains the imaginary number, which is a bit inconvenient. We'd like to write this without the imaginary number. To assist with that, we will employ two well-known relations known as the Euler relations. These are e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta and e to the minus i theta equals cosine theta minus i sine theta. Of course, theta can be any variable, such as time. To eliminate the imaginary numbers, we begin with the expression for displacement and the two Euler relations. We use the first Euler relation to replace e to the positive i omega t with cosine omega t plus i sine omega t. We use the second Euler relation to replace e to the minus i omega t with cosine omega t minus i sine omega t. Gathering together both cosine terms, we obtain cosine omega t times the quantity a plus b. Gathering together the terms containing sine, we end up with sine omega t times the quantity a i minus b i. A plus B and AI minus BI are just constants. Because of that, we are free to replace A plus B with another constant, a single constant, and we'll call that C. Even though the imaginary number in AI minus BI may look unfamiliar, it is just a number. Thus, we can replace AI minus BI with another constant, and we'll call that D. We have gotten rid of the imaginary number, but the constants c and d are still unknown. At this point, the function for displacement still represents essentially an infinite number of solutions because c and d can be anything. This is common when solving differential equations, but it is also not very helpful. To make further progress, we need to impose initial conditions. For the harmonic oscillator, this is easy. We can say that at time equals zero, the mass is at a displacement of zero. This is a perfectly arbitrary choice, but that's the nature of initial conditions. We seek displacement as a function of time for one condition, the one where the mass begins time at a displacement of zero. This is the only way to reduce an infinite number of solutions to one particular solution. To use this initial condition, we plug zero in for time everywhere in the expression for displacement. This gives x at t equals zero equal to c times cosine of zero plus d times sine of zero. At t equals zero, we said that x equals zero, so the left side of this expression is zero. On the right, we have c times one, because cosine of zero is one, plus d times zero, because the sine of zero is zero. This tells us that c is zero for this initial condition. For this initial condition, displacement as a function of time becomes x equal to d times sine omega t because the term containing c is zero. Expanding omega, displacement is d times sine of the square root of k over m times time. In this expression for displacement, we know that k is the force constant, a quantity representing the stiffness of the spring. We know that m is the mass of the object attached to the spring, and that t is time. But what is d? It is a constant, for sure, but it also represents something physical about the harmonic oscillator. You may already know what it is, but let's see if we can determine what it is without using prior knowledge. We have determined that displacement as a function of time for the mass on the end of the spring is some constant d times sine omega t. We can gain insight into the meaning of d by finding the time at which the displacement equals d. We can do this by plugging d in for displacement such that d equals d times sine omega t. Dividing through by d, we obtain 1 equal to sine omega t. The sine of omega t will equal 1 when omega t is equal to pi over 2 because the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Solving for t gives pi over 2 omega. This is the time at which the mass attached to the spring is at a displacement of d, whatever that is. Honestly, this really hasn't helped tell us what d is but the next step will. Now we need to find the velocity of the object at this time. Velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time, and taking the derivative of d sine omega t gives d times omega times cosine omega t. We want to know what the velocity is at time pi over two omega, so we substitute pi over two omega in for time. This gives velocity equal to d omega times cosine omega pi over two omega. The omegas in the cosine cancel, giving velocity equal to d omega times cosine cosine pi over two. The cosine of pi over two is zero, so the velocity of the mass on the end of the spring is zero when displacement equals d. That's helpful because physically we know that mass on the end of the spring will only have a velocity of zero when it changes its direction of motion. As the spring stretches and the displacement increases, there will always come a displacement where the mass stops and reverses direction. This is called a turning point, and the displacement at which this happens is the maximum displacement of the mass. The constant d is therefore the maximum displacement of the mass. There's another name 
name for this, and it is amplitude. D is therefore the amplitude of the motion. The usual symbol for amplitude is A, and this allows us to write displacement as amplitude times sine omega t. Expanding omega, we get amplitude times sine of the square root of the force constant over mass times time. And now we have a physical interpretation for every quantity in this expression. That's progress, but it's not quite enough progress. For the harmonic oscillator system, we had several goals. Of these, we have found the displacement and velocity of the mass as a function of time. We have done this using only Newton's laws, and we have related displacement and velocity to properties of the system, the force constant and the mass. We have not found anything else, period, frequency, kinetic energy, or potential energy. These things are addressed in other microlectures. And that's the harmonic oscillator equation of motion.